this video is going to be a little bit different than what I normally do. I'm just going to draw for about 10-15 minutes and talk about what I'm doing. I'm trying to keep my head out of the way as we draw. This is for a, a call for entries for a show called The Blues. And I'm taking a little bit of a different approach because I haven't really done one of these faces paintings on a long rectangular canvas. This is probably the worst place to put this face in the middle because that'll just get too much attention, you know. I'm gonna use a pencil, hopefully that'll show up in the camera. So I've already talked in other videos about why I paint abstract faces. So I'm not gonna go into a lot of details about that here. I will say it's about interconnectedness of all things. But if you wanna know more about thought process and the years of developing this style and why I do it, then check out this other video. There's a call for entries. It's, I really don't know anything about it. It's just a call for entries for artwork from a company called Artrepreneur. And, and that's sort of new to me. I don't really know what they're all about. I mean, I do this stuff for myself, but at the same time, I have to find ways, at least opportunities for promotion and to share my work and get it out there. Uh, it also just gives me a reason to do <laughs> different, try different things. So. Yeah, I haven't done a lot of these faces paintings with blue, a blue palette, and I think that's generally what they're asking for. It's also interesting, drawing these things, usually I don't talk while I'm working. It's more intuitive, and I just let go and experiment and play, and I don't know, the part of my mind that draws this stuff is not the same part that uh, forms language. And so sometimes, well, at least now, I'm finding that that's a little bit difficult for me to talk and draw uh, this stuff at the same time. So that's interesting. Because it's gonna be blue, I think I think of nighttime. I'm a little bit interested in trying to make some of these elements feel like a city or like a night scene. So we'll see how that goes when I paint it. Thinking about adding in some animals, which I've never done before in a painting. I'm hesitant to do that because every time I try to mix faces with animals, I actually struggle with it, which is probably why I should do it. Anyway, so we'll see. Sometimes I feel like I'm forcing art on people, or at least my art. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> there's, not a, there's not a big market for bad art. I'm just going to start blocking in some areas and make it rough in some, some places where maybe some faces can go. So I can't get some interesting shapes happening, you know. You know, some people have just said I haven't had enough exposure and enough people haven't seen what I do. And maybe that's the case. I don't know. Again, it's this weird paradox of doing stuff just because you want to do it. But at the same time, needing to pay bills would be great if, I mean, the perfect sort of scenario would be that uh, for a creative, I would guess, is that you could somehow find a way to do what you love be good at it, have it be something that could make money so you could do it as a job. And then sort of cherry on top would be, uh, it helps the world in some way. I ended up drawing another face right in the middle, <laughs> which is what I was trying to avoid. That's all right. I can always paint over it if I really feel like it. I don't do this often enough, but I like when two faces merge to become a third face. Sometimes I see that, I don't know if other people see it. It's just interesting what sort of the expressions and emotion that you can get with just a few lines. Some of these dudes look like Iron Man. <laughs> I'm not sure that's a good thing. Repetition is always a good thing too. I feel like your eye needs something to move it around and there's probably uh, some more thought that I can do. I probably can do more planning behind you know some of that but I almost feel like it's better when it's just a natural it's just, I don't know for me personally I just feel like I naturally find a way to do that even if it's in the painting stage I also hear comments a lot where people say I can't do that I could never do that similar to I can't draw people often say that I can't I can't do this um, and I, I guess it's meant to be a compliment but then I would ask, have you tried to do it? Um, I mean, I guess the first question is, do you want to do it? And don't have to. I do, I do think anyone can do this. I, I really do. 
So that's the first thing, is I don't, I don't want to discourage anyone from doing stuff if they're interested in this kind of art. I want to have the opposite effect, right? I don't want to discourage people from, from doing it. And so I just had the thought that I, I would explain at a higher level where I'm at with the concepts I choose, or at least the subject matter that I choose. I'm, it's, it may seem like I'm all over the place, and in reality, I have it broken down in my mind into three sort of categories. Uh, one, I'm always continually working on abstract faces, uh, interconnected uh, faces, images of very abstract entities, if you will. And so that's one theme that I've just been pursuing forever. And that one is really more an evolution of something that I'm very comfortable with, something I enjoy doing, and that feels like soul work, if you will. And then recently I've been focusing on uh, plain air painting, um, which is so falls on a different sort of part of the spectrum of art. And that is more about practicing and just trying uh, to learn something new. And I feel like that's just a necessary thing that I should always be doing. So I'm gonna, from time to time, I will choose something, whether it's based on a new material, a new supply, or a different style. Uh, like for instance, in the future, I'm sure I'm gonna try oil painting more. I'm sure I'm gonna do some portraiture. I might try color pencils. So I will be, you know, I will find something that just gets my attention, that I'm drawn to, that I've been interested in for a long time, or maybe even something that I've seen recently, and I, and I will just focus on that for a good bit of time. So those are two distinct areas. Those are two distinct subject matters or approaches to art that I'm taking right now. And then the third is where it might seem a little bit chaotic and crazy, but in my mind, it's not uh, at all. And that is, I reserve part of my time uh, as an artist, whether that be each week, a little bit each day, or maybe every, few weeks, whatever it may be, whenever I decide, to, I just feel up for it, I reserve a part of my time for experimentation. And that's not necessarily the same as picking a style of art and focusing on that to try to learn how to do it. It's more random, uh, where I might just go into a session, 30 minutes here, two hours there, with a sketchbook or with paint, or just thinking. I, I, I will try to mix in a little bit of randomness. And so therefore, you know, you'll see like the bird paintings. The bird paintings that I've been posting are really an experiment. And I'm not even sure exactly why I started doing those. I just, I had this idea that I was drawn to these folk art primitive type drawings and illustrations of birds. And I think there's a lot more going on there. I mean, there's some deeper meaning behind them. You know, it has to do with, and this probably isn't the video to get into all that, but for me, it has to do with potential in individuals and birds that are flightless or maybe grounded or in cages or being held back, but have the potential to break free. And all of that kind of weird nonsense in my head is sort of just loosely associated with this concept of, of trying new things and not really trying to predict where they're going to go, not trying to uh, label them, categorize them, limit them in any way. It's just, it's just an experiment. And so if you look at my artwork from, you know, a 30,000 foot view, you might see different styles and different directions and it might feel chaotic. And maybe that isn't really the best thing from a marketable sense. You know, because I hear a lot of times people want to develop a style and they need a style and they, you know, it's hard, you know, people want predictability and consistency and they want to see the sameness. And, you know, I, that isn't me right now. <laughs> I have to assume that a lot of other artists are dealing with the same thing where, you know, you don't want to be pigeonholed into one look and feel. And, you know, maybe part of it is an immaturity thing. Like it just takes time to develop a style. And so therefore you need to experiment. Maybe that's where I am even after all these years. I'm still just experimenting and trying to figure out my style. But I can't get hung up in making everything look the same uh, right now. I, I, you know, and so there, those, that's my approach right now. I hope that makes sense. You know, I, 
feel like this kind of thing would have resonated with me earlier in my path, let me know if that resonates with you as an artist or as someone who's interested in art. If some of these things, some of these challenges, some of these thoughts and processes are relatable, that's interesting to me.